Now, Libyan political factions holding peace talks in Geneva have agreed to sit down for further meetings at home. The participating parties wrapped up the second round of negotiations aimed at ending the political crisis in the North African nation. The talks also aimed at engaging in the peace process. Militants loyal to ex-commander Ibrahim Ibrahim. The group has formed a government in Tripoli. The insurgents boycotted the talks because they were not held in Libya. The UN-sponsored negotiations opened in Geneva in mid-January. The volatile oil-rich North African country has been the scene of numerous clashes between government forces and rival militia groups. Libya has two rival governments, both pushing for full control. One faction holds Tripoli, while the other, which is Libya's western-backed government, wants the cities of Beida and Tobruk. Libya's turmoil began in 2011 after the fall of former dictator Muammar Gaddafi. Joining us via Skype from Belfast is Saeb Shath. He's an author and Middle East affairs expert. Many thanks for joining us here on Press TV, Mr. Shath. Now, Libya's political turmoil is extremely complex here. How far do you think these talks in Geneva are going to go, though, in resolving uh, the situation? I, I want to give you a little bit of uh, historical background so we can understand what's happening. Uh, since the NATO war in Libya and the assassination, the vicious assassination of the uh, Libyan sovereign Muammar Gaddafi, then Libya uh, ever since uh, blunt into complex conflict, uh, uh, which is turned to a civil war between uh, two factions of the same forces who fought uh, Gaddafi as well. The, the civil war itself intensified last summer after the national election for the Libyan uh, parliament. That uh, result uh, of the election uh, ended in heavy losses for the Islamic uh, militants and Islamic groups. Uh, they, then the Islamic groups, uh, 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 with their scattered groups, gathered themselves together and they formed an alliance called Quwat Fajr Libya, uh, Libya Dawn Militants Alliance, and uh, they declared the parliament is void, and they declared the Tripoli as uh, their capital, and they seized uh, Tripoli. Uh, the members of that elected parliament then uh, fled uh, to Tobruk, uh, east of, uh, of Libya, which is near enough to Egypt. Uh, and they, since then, all of that inflicted chaos and mayhem uh, across Libya. Libya is engulfed with chaos today. Uh, this, in its own, uh, give a great opportunity to ISIS. ISIS, we know, established an emirate in a, a, an eastern uh, uh, portal city called Derna. It's a strategic city with a huge commercial port. And they call it as a part of their Khilafat, uh, in, uh, which is linked to in Syria and, uh, uh, the, the, uh, and Iraq. Uh, that uh, uh, opportunity uh, for ISIS, uh, with that or the absence of law and order, uh, pushed ISIS to show as well itself and flex its muscles when attacked uh, the hotel in Libya, killing 10, one of them American and one in French. Uh, the, uh, then we can see uh, the, these, the same militants who are acting in Libya are the same who was imported to Syria, the same mercenaries which came from 80-something countries uh, to Iraq and Libya are the same backers. They are the same products of NATO and the Western alliance. So they have the same logic. With those people, uh, they are sitting in, uh, and it's supposed to be sitting in Geneva to talk. They, the representative they send in there, uh, they cannot uh, actually uh, influence the groups who's fighting the civil wars in the ground. Since these uh, militants and warring factions in Libya, each one have their own agenda. Each one have uh, their eyes on uh, an oil field or the central bank, like when the Tobruk government took over the branch of Benghazi Central Bank, they said we are an internationally recognized government and we have to put our hands on the central bank. Since Libya is running out of cash, running out of money, we are seeing here uh, an international, a huge uh, disaster. The international community uh, helped in creating another uh, humanitarian disaster in another Arabic country that's happening in Libya. So, okay, I'm going to uh, have to stop you there, Mr. Shath. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Uh, that was author and Middle East affairs expert Saab Shath. They're joining us via Skype from Belfast. Mr. Shath, it's always good to talk to you here on Press TV. You're